A new Wells Fargo money study finds that two-thirds of Americans are cutting back on spending, while just over half are worried about their financial situation, even if they do have enough saved up. For more on that, let's bring in Michael Lear. She's Wells Fargo head of advice and planning. Michael, good to talk to you today. How does this situation differ from where we've been the years past? So when we think about how Americans are feeling in our Wells Fargo money study, the big thing that we understood from them is that they told us that they're more worried and more concerned and feel more constrained than they have been before, especially when they were growing up around money. And that leads into a very set of interesting behaviors, including uh, being compelled to lie about how much they spend, uh, being compelled to even lie about the value of their homes, uh, being really reluctant to talk about money in general. So it's really creating a lot of different behaviors for Americans, this enormous concern they have around their money, which, as we all know, contrasts with some of the economic data we, we've seen, which is reasonably positive. So Americans, for whatever reason, aren't feeling that in their pocketbooks. What's driving some of those concerns? So when we think about what's really driving the concern, it's this idea that after they spend on needs, we had a high uh, number of participants say that they didn't feel like they had a lot to spend on extras. So think about inflation, think about rates or borrowing costs, those types of things putting pressure on Americans and causing them, and, and many almost have said, to make really tough financial trade-offs and choices on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm, I'm a behavioral scientist, uh, so what that means is it, it makes the mind pretty exhausted when you go throughout the day having to make tough economic choices that you may not have had to make in the past two or three years when inflation was lower or rates were lower. How does this differ from, you know, within demographics? I and mean, I sort of think about Gen Z, those who are in their 20s versus maybe older millennials. I mean, are you seeing a divergence there about the concerns that come from money, the way they think about what the future could hold, specifically on their finances. Absolutely. So some of the most fascinating data comes from teens. So we were able to actually do what's called the Talk Lab protocol to actually talk to teens for a, a, a long period of time, as well as uh, include them in the survey. And they are the most worried and anxious when it comes to their money even relative to, uh, let's say, their adult counterparts in a variety of areas, which is causing them to feel especially compelled to lie, especially when it comes to things like spending and what they're spending on. And so we see in that demographic, the worry and concern is, in some cases, highest. When we look, though, at young affluent Americans, for example, they seem to really be dealing with the economic dynamics of very very positive way. So there's a level of optimism in that cohort, and they're continuing on with their life plans, whether it's buying homes or spending money they want. They're just being very, very intentional about that spending and making sure that they really set goals and plan for their future. So you look at something like the Consumer Confidence Index today, you know, pushing or, or pulling back um, for the first time in, in three months or, or four months, I guess, if when you consider three months of gains. Um, is that reflected? Is that reflective of what you found in your study? You know, because the the question then becomes: Well, if the economic data looks pretty positive, then why are Americans so down on the economy and where they are personally? So, when we look at where Americans feel really constrained in our survey, what? we find is it really is on the spending patterns and making those tough choices. So if we think back just two, three, four years ago, when inflation was lower and prices were more predictable, we could almost go on a set it and forget it. And, and we all hear that in, in investing context often or autopilot or make things automatic. And why we see potentially the sentiment changing is because we can't be on autopilot anymore. Prices are a bit less predictable in terms of what we've been used to. We can't go throughout our day uh, thoughtless. We have to be hyper intentional so that at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, we have enough money to pay for those essentials and also have a little extra left over to spend and to enjoy our lives. The positive part is Americans in our survey looking forward feel a sense of optimism and tell, told us that the majority told us that 
This idea of ups and downs is a normal course of being an American. And so they're ready to stay positive and to try their best to find solutions. They said they didn't want to talk about problems anymore, solutions to stick to their savings and investing plans. Uh, Michael, I want to get back to what you said about teens and, and how they are so concerned about where their finances are. I wonder how much of that has to do with sort of the, the noise that they face every day, whether it's the headlines, whether it's on social media, you know, how much of it has to do with where they have been the last several years as a result of the pandemic. I mean, are there other external factors that you found that really have contributed to those concerns? So there's three that came up. One is simply how much time we're spending, to your point, on things like social media. So we asked a very basic question, how much do you time, time do you spend managing your money per week? And people said around three hours on average versus scrolling social media videos, which was nine hours per week. Uh, so when, when we think about where we're spending our time and energy, to your point, those social pressures come into play. The second one is this extraordinary sense of self-judgment and also judgment, to your point, from the external environment that teens and frankly, adults feel each and every day. And that caused in this third category for people to want to actually have a mental reset. So the majority of Americans wanted a mental reset when it came to their money because they want to take control of their money. They recognized money was taking control of themselves. And so that's where people wanted to stop talking about the problems and talk, talk about the solutions, like how to stick with their savings and, and investing plan, how to be more intentional when it comes to spending. So that was a really positive turn. And if we're able to help our teens and encourage them to focus on what's in their control versus what's, to your point, out in the environment and out of their control, that puts those sometimes those pressures on us to be something that, that we, we aren't, uh, we can actually start a national conversation that will help us make more of our money.